A relatively common problem you may encounter is the need to cut a sign or design that is larger than the available material or in fact the machinable area on your uh, CNC router bed. Uh, so to demonstrate how you can um, deal with this problem I've got an example sign here that's that's pretty large. It's 72 inches by 48 inches here. Uh, so that's going to be larger than, than most people's uh, router beds. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to just uh, look at the 2D and 3D view together and then I'm going to cut across and focus a little bit now on the toolpaths that have been created for this sign. So let's start and get a feel for what the sign looks like. So I'm going to turn on all the toolpaths here and just preview them so that you can see the final result. And uh, I've got a little extra cutout here that allows me to separate the sign from the material from which it's been cut. And that means in the um, preview mode here I can double click on the area and it will delete it as waste material and we can see the finished sign. So you can see the sign comprises quite a few different elements, it's got some pocketing, uh, some v-bit work to, to bring up the edges here, some raised bevel text uh, sitting inside again a pocket with some profiles and cutout passes. So there's quite a few tool paths involved in this job but the important thing to emphasize at this stage is despite the fact that I know I can't machine 72 inches by 48 I don't need to worry about that during the design process so the design process has been done for this sign as if it will be uh, manufacturable at that size and it's only now that I come to think about how outputting my toolpaths to my machine tool that I need to worry about the fact that I'm limited by my machining say my router bed size and so for the purposes of this demo we're going to assume for example that we've got a router with only a um, 24 inch bed size so it's only got a two foot by two foot machinable area so how do we deal with this sign? Well, there's a set of functionality that's all accessible here from the Tile Toolpaths command, which is on the Toolpaths tab on the right-hand side. And when I switch that on, we get a Toolpath Tiling Manager. And this allows us to break the toolpaths up that we've created into paneled sections. And this will allow me to take my sign and cut it as a series of 24-inch panels such that at the end I can assemble those panels to make my finished um, part and that allows me to work around the limitation of my machine bed. Similarly you might only have, although you might have a larger machine bed, you might only have material pieces that are 24 inches in size and so the same situation really arises. Okay so how do we go about doing that? Well it's much simpler than you might first imagine we have simply an option here that says tile toolpaths. Uh, now this manager you can show and hide but the crucial fact is whether or not you have this option switched on. As soon as we switch this option on um, the software goes ahead and divides any toolpaths you've created into a series of panels. Now it's not very exciting at the moment because if I turn these toolpaths on we'll see that it doesn't seem to have done much. That's because at the moment it's automatically found the full size of our job and we're going to edit these values now to tell it what the size is that uh, we require. But first of all I'll just mention at the top here there's three options individual tiles, feed through in X and feed through in Y. Now the feed through options are really for the situation where you have a long thin design and you might have a gantry type router and in those cases it's quite convenient. If it will fit on your bed in one dimension and it's just too long with a gantry style router you can imagine that you can cut this section then unclamp the material, feed it through the same piece of material reset the origin and machine the second part of the sign, the middle piece of the sign, then draw it through again and cut it again. Uh, and this system is really handy because you end up with cutting effectively a single piece of material. You're just doing it in um, bite-sized chunks that, that match your machine's bed size. Um, we're not going to focus on these for a moment. There is another tutorial that deals with an, an example of a mantelpiece that uses the feed-through uh, system, which you can look at if you need that. We're going to focus on this one, individual tiles. The principle is very similar, except in this case we are going to split our design into X panels in both X and Y. Um, so it's too big for our bed in both dimensions. Right, let's go ahead and, and tell it what size tiles we need. We need 24 inch tiles for the purposes of this example which is the size of our machine bed and I'm going to leave the tile over at zero for the moment. We'll come back to that in a second and I'm going to click update tiles and as soon as I do that you can see that two things have happened. One is we're now only seeing a small section of our original toolpaths uh, and the 2D view has become divided and has a little overlay here with the letters T1, T4 etc. 
Now what these are showing us are the individual tiles and as you would expect given our original job size the 24 inch panel fits exactly in six panels so we can with six 24 inch panels we can make the entire 72 by 48 inch piece. Uh, from this point on with the tiling manager um, on and the tile toolpath option selected um, our toolpaths now although um, the list hasn't changed these the, the sections of each of these toolpaths that we will see is going to be determined by which active tile we're looking at so to make that clear let's just look at one toolpath for the moment so I'm just going to uncheck these so we're just looking at uh, say the cutouts toolpath just to keep things simple which you can see the section of here uh, and as I change the tiles you will see the sections of the cutout toolpath that match each tile okay so it's taken all of these toolpaths and then it is worked out which sections of each of those toolpaths fit into each area and divide them up accordingly okay so all these toolpaths will exist but they are now being given to us in only the sections that are inside the tile that we want so I've selected the tile from this drop down list as we saw just now and we can see each tile as we go around that list. We can also select the tiles very conveniently from the 2D view by simply double clicking on any blank area of your 2D view in each tile section and that will select the same tiles. Now here you can very simply see the link between the 2D view tile and the 3D view uh, of our finished sign but this isn't actually a realistic view when you begin to think about it because of course what we really want is toolpaths that are all sitting on our bed and our bed size is only 24 inches from this origin and the reason we're still able to see each tile in situ uh, if you like um, is because we have a ch there's a checkbox at the bottom here that's asking the software to draw toolpaths in the original position crucially just for visualization so the thing to emphasize here is that this checkbox only affects how we see the toolpaths relative to one another in our preview and the reason for this is it sometimes it's often in fact convenient when you're previewing your finished sign to make sure um, that everything uh, is correct when the sign is assembled so the so you can see effectively the, the um, toolpaths being calculated in the position that the assembled panel will go and that way you get to see a visualization of the finished whole piece because obviously what we're actually going to end up is a stack of 24 inch pieces of material that's what we're actually going to cut so when I uncheck this uh, and I reset our preview that's now what we see so what we're now seeing and I've uh, switched the origin on here so that you can see where the 00, zero origin is for our model uh, and I just turn those off. Now we are seeing an actual piece of material, an actual 24 inch panel and whichever panel we select uh, we will be seeing the toolpath in the right, in the location as it will actually be as we cut each panel. So they are now effectively lying all in the same location in space. So um, the visualization version just allows you to put the effectively put the panel in the real world uh, where it will be in the assembled final piece and with the uh, visualization switched off you see the actual panel uh, as it will be output. Now the other thing just to emphasize again is that this does the checkbox here does not affect your final output toolpath. It doesn't matter which way around you've got this switched. The output toolpath will always be correct for the finished for the actual job. So in other words it will always be in this configuration within origin relative to each panel. Okay. So that's it. So we've got each panel now. Uh, and we can simulate each panel, preview each panel, um, we can preview all the toolpaths and we will see the toolpaths just relating to each panel. Okay, if I select this one we can see all the toolpaths relating to the bottom right panel and similarly we can select the middle bottom panel here and see all the toolpaths relating to that. Okay, so crucially here we haven't had to do anything very um, clever at all, we've just let the software deal with all the problems of dividing the toolpath up. Um, one thing we might want to um, think about just from a practical point of view, if I turn these toolpaths on for a second, uh, it's quite likely that you'll cut panels that are actually slightly smaller than your available machining size because you're going to put on pieces and want to maybe cut out each panel at the end. Uh, and it's convenient then to slightly overrun your uh, the machine 
toolpaths that are creating the sign, just slightly overlap them a little bit so that you can cut back a clean edge for assembly. And that's really what this tile overlap option does. If I set that to be 25, oh, sorry, 0.25 quarter of an inch and update the tiles, quarter of an inch is probably a bit, bit much as well. But now what it's done is it's created um, for the 24 inch tile, it's actually created me a toolpath which is going to overrun on the top and right edge by another quarter of an inch. And this would allow me to cut tiles slightly smaller than my bed machining size and then add an extra cutout pass to make sure I had clean edges to um, assemble the final sign. So the overlap is, is exactly that, but the, the, these tiles will um, include a little bit of an overrun into the next tile to the above and, and to the right of them. The area of the overlap is indicated graphically in this diagram, so the little grey area here shows you where the toolpath overlaps will be added. Um, and that's just a convenient little extra option that you can use. OK, so let's go and just uh, demonstrate the final step, really, of having tiled the toolpaths and what they look like when they're saved. So for this purpose, I'm just going to select the um, Profile Cutout Toolpath, for example. Go to Save here. And I have an option here to output my tiled toolpaths. I've got toolpath tiling on, so this option is available to me. Um, I don't have to do that still, even at this stage. I can switch that off and we can just save these toolpaths out entirely uh, as they were created. And this is something important to understand the toolpath tiling. It is purely um, a, f a last option and it's non-destructive. So um, we can turn on and off tiling very trivially at any time and uh, your original toolpaths are not in any way damaged. Um, but I am going to output a toolpath uh, for tiling here and I'm just going to use a standard G-code output. So I'm outputting the profile cutout pass. When I come to save this, you can see uh, as you might expect, that because we've tiled it, there are now six profile cutouts, okay, and they are prefixed automatically with the tile number that relates to them. So when we output these sort of quite a, quite a lot of toolpaths here, and each one of these is now going to produce six uh, bits because, and they will relate to um, each of the tiles. So when you've finished outputting all your toolpaths, which is obviously dependent on what sort of post process you have, uh, you need to make sure that you group together all the T1s and that, are all the, that, that is the set of toolpaths that will do tile 1. Then you group together all the T2s and cut those and that will be associated with tile 2. Tile 2, obviously you will have put fresh material on and, and started again for the second tile. Uh, but that's really it. So the tiling, um, while conceptually might seem to be quite tricky. The software, hopefully, you'll find, makes it really easy. Um, so just to recap then, we didn't create anything special in the toolpaths initially. We just created our job exactly as the finished piece will be made without making any concessions to the limitations of material or machining bed size. As we came to output the toolpaths, we just switched on the tiling manager and put in what the actual tile size was going to be, what our limiting factor was, either in material or bed size. And the software divided the created toolpaths for us automatically and then when I came to output the toolpaths I made sure that I had output tile toolpaths checked here which it will be by default if your tiling manager is switched on um, and then just understand that the toolpaths that uh, result will be divided uh, according to the number of tiles needed okay and they will be prefixed with the tile number okay and that's it that allows you to use um, your smaller machine or limited size material to make much bigger jobs